So cortical primal neurons like this one are a central element of many higher brain functions such as perception, learning and attention. And these cells have evolved these beautiful dendritic trees, probably largely to be able to compartmentalize information. Now one important organizational feature is actually that information arriving at the perisomatic domain of these cells encodes aspects of the world, so bottom-up information, whereas inputs arriving in the distal tuft of these neurons represent largely internally generated top-down information. Now my lab is in general very interested in this convergence of top-down and bottom-up signaling. And in the current paper, we investigate a very little understood type of interneuron which is located here in layer 1 and which selectively controls the computations of these distal dendrites in a highly experienced dependent manner. It was known that garbage ignorance in layer 1 of the cortex exists, but no molecular marker was known for these neurons and therefore it was not possible to manipulate them. And so to find such a marker, we first reanalyzed existing datasets from the previous study of ours and then performed in situ hybridization for a gene that seemed interesting. The name of this gene is NDNF and indeed our experiments reveal that NDNF is expressed primarily in GABAergic neurons in layer 1 of the cortex and this is uh, very different from the distribution of other types of GABAergic neurons. Next we generated knock-in mice for NDNF free and flip knock-in mice. Indeed, when used in combination with free or flip dependent viral constructs, these mice allow for very selective labeling of NDNF neurons in layer 1. And so now we have the genetic tools to uh, manipulate NDNF neurons in layer 1. To investigate how NDNF neurons affect processing of top-down information, I then used this novel Cree line in combination with viral tracing techniques to elucidate which neurons in the brain actually innervate NDNF neurons and where NDNF neurons in turn form their output synapses. Interestingly, the majority of these synapses are located within layer 1. Using optogenetic circuit mapping, I then find that NDNF neurons broadly connect to other neurons in the network, both interneurons and pyramidal neurons. However, what stood out was their markedly strong synapses onto the tips of the pyramidal neuron dendrites. Dendritic tufts of pyramidal neurons generate electrical events called dendritic spikes, which allow for efficient and active transfer of top-down information arriving at layer 1 to the more distally located soma. Dendritic spikes have been shown important in learning and perception and can strongly influence the output firing pattern of pyramidal neurons. Our experiments clearly show that NENF neurons powerfully block these electrical events both in vitro and during sound presentation in vivo which has important consequences for computations going on in the dendrite when NDNF neurons become active. Another well-described source of inhibition arriving at the distal dendritic tufts in layer 1 comes from somatostatin-positive Martinotti cells. Therefore we asked whether they would operate differently. We show striking differences between these two types of inhibition. Most notably is the fact that NDNF neurons inhibit the dendrite over much longer timescales. These two types of dendritic inhibition don't only function in parallel, they also interact. Using in vivo 2 photon calcium imaging, I recorded the response of somatostatin and NDNF interneurons to sound stimuli at different intensities. I found that somatostatin interneurons strongly regulate NDNF activity in vivo in the intact circuit, and I confirmed these results with an experiment where synaptic transmission of somatostatin cells was inhibited. Furthermore, we investigated how activity of these two types of dendritic inhibition changes when the stimulus gains behavior relevance through integration of top-down inputs. To answer this question, I combined calcium imaging with discriminative auditory fear conditioning and compared the response of, of NDNF and somatostatin neurons to the stimulus before and after learning. NDNF interneurons showed a significantly increased response with an increase in behavior relevance, whereas somatostatin responses did not change. In summary, we identified NDNF as a specific marker for layer 1 interneurons, providing prolonged inhibition to apical tuft dendrites in an experience dependent manner. In our ongoing work, we further investigate how NDNF interneurons shape the function of the local cortical circuits.